This is going to be so much fun. This is the most exciting video I've ever created in my entire life. Look at all of these floppy disks that we get to go through and check every single one of them. I am so excited. I have never done a video in my entire life that is more exciting. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, as you guys saw from that little intro clip, uh, it's going to be more of an interesting video because we're going to be revisiting that set of 100 broken floppy diskettes that I purchased and took a look at in this video right here. It'll be up in the cards if you want to go check it out. Now, why did I purchase these? Well, really just to make that video. I wanted to see what this was all about. I knew I was going to get 100 broken floppy diskettes, but I didn't know what was going to be contained on those diskettes or what was formally contained on those diskettes. I didn't know what labels they were going to have, if they were all going to be in nice physical shape like these here, if they were going to be like these are floppy disks that were sold or provided with software originally on them. All of these in here were sold blank and then somebody put their own data onto them. I was also thinking about tacking these up on the wall behind me to make a nice little backdrop for these videos, which is something that I may still do. But I want to revisit these in this video because I got a lot of comments on that previous video of you guys saying why don't you just try this anyway see if these really are broken so that's what we're going to be doing in today's video we're going to be going through every single one of these I'm going to be popping them into the $5 Windows 98 PC because we haven't used that computer in a while and we're going to see if any of these work see if we can read data off of them or copy data over to them all right everybody so here we are we've got a fresh install of windows 98 on the windows 98 pc and we're going to be doing this one a little bit differently because uh, we're going to be doing a time lapse and the reason i'm doing that is because well there are a lot of diskettes to go through, and again, my theory is none of these are going to work. But if one of them does work, we're going to pause the time lapse and we're going to take a look at what's on it and see if we can write files over to it. Now, remember in that last video, I mentioned that, or well, you guys saw if you watched it, that we got a couple of physically damaged diskettes. Yeah, so we've got a, a, a few diskettes, not a whole lot, but a few that are physically damaged. So we're not going to be able to take a look at every single one of these obviously because I don't want to put a physically damaged diskette into this floppy disk drive but most of them are physically intact we just have to figure out if the data on them is and that's what we're going to be doing right now so we've got one camera on the computer monitor one camera on the floppy disk drive on the front of the computer and a third camera on the stacks of floppy diskettes that I'm going to be going through so you guys can see exactly how far along that I am so without any further ado let's get started all right guys well three diskettes in and uh one of them actually works this was labeled free ram i believe and we're going to just let's see if we can copy one of these files this looks like an image a pcx document let's see if we can copy this to the desktop This is the first one that has actually been able to read files off the disk. It could still be corrupted. This doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work. The activity light is on full time and it hasn't even come up with a copy prompt at all. But we can see the files on the disk. Although if we cannot, uh, you know, take the files off the diskette or, or, or add files to it, that's definitely going to be a problem. See, this looks like command.com, right? Yep, command.com. Oh, it's copying. Will it copy to the desktop? Nope, cannot copy. The system cannot read from the specified device. So, this one, uh, this disk is definitely corrupted. Actually, this one has no label on it, as you can see, but we're going to set this one aside and we'll move on with the time lapse. All right, so I went ahead and booted off of a Windows 95 boot disk just to make everything go a little bit smoother. So, we just have to run a dir command on the A drive to see if it's able to pull files off of it or will read files off of it. And this next disk right here does, at least it starts to, but then it fails with a general failure reading drive A. Well, it looks like we have another contender here. This one is labeled 
documents, Christmas list, candles, candles I think, and map skill worksheets. And this does have, like when I did a directory listing, it read the files on it. So can we copy, let's just try to copy, um, we'll do poo.pcc to the C drive here. And we'll see if it copies. Sector not found reading drive A. So nope, that does not work. So, so much for that. But we've got three diskettes now that we can actually, I mean, we can read the files off of, we just cannot copy them off of the drive. Well, we just had two back to back. This is our fourth diskette now that is, we can actually read the files off of. Now the diskette is labeled 3D Studio 4. And the drive label is cracked, so I'm assuming that this is a pirated piece of software. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to copy this 3d4.exe file to the C drive and press enter and we'll see if it's able to copy it. And there's our data error reading drive A. So on to our next diskette. And we got another one here. This one is labeled Windows NT 3.1 setup disk for CD-ROM. Uh, it's another copied uh, disk. This is not an original one, obviously, but we do have a lot of sys files on here. So let's just do a uh, dir slash wy directory listing. And yeah, so we've got, yeah, a bunch of sys files. Volume and drive A is disk one. So. Let's try to copy, um, let's see here, arrow.sys, A-R-O-W dot S-Y-S to the C drive, not the F drive, the C drive, and sector not found reading drive A once again. And we've got another one. Uh, this one right here is, there was no label, like no sticker on it. There's 51 files on it. It is, oh, I had to cross this one out. I think this had someone's name on it, but uh, that's that's what it was. It's disk 404. Uh, it might be like a backup or something like that. Well, we've got this dlink.nfo. So let's try to copy, oh, it's still uh, reading here. Copy dlink.nfo to the C drive. Sector not found once again. All right, so we'll add this to the pile and move on to the next one. And we have another one. This one right here is another uh, copy of something. Oh, there's actually no writing on it whatsoever. There is one directory on it called zip. So maybe something to do with a zip disk possibly. Let's, uh, let's go into that directory. And this is also, we're through one of our stacks here. You can see on this camera over here. So we're in the zip directory. Uh, what do we got in here? We have a zip file, ARJ, two ARJ files, and a JPEG. Um, so let's try to copy the JPEG. So that's going to be B, uh, B I K I N I S three. Oh, bikini, <laughs> bikinis three dot JPEG. Gee, I wonder what that one is. Uh, we'll copy that to the <laughs> to the C drive. Okay, so that's yep. So uh, data error reading drive A once again. Well, that's unfortunate. We'll go ahead and uh, pop this one out, add it to the, this is our seventh disc actually, where we can read the files off of it. Uh, so we're going to pop in another one, Atlas Pro Data 3 of 5. See if we can read the files off this one. Looks like we got another one here. This one, interesting. Chicago.inf and a setup.exe. Is this a Windows beta? Uh, no, it is. Oh, this is the HP uh, LaserJet printing software, the HP LaserJet 6L 
printing software. I assume this is the driver. Uh, but yeah, I saw Chicago.inf. I was like, oh, I wonder if this is a Windows beta, like for Windows 95. But uh, no, it is not. It's an HP. At least maybe it is. I don't know. Well, we're going to copy setup.exe. Uh, so copy setup.exe. I'm doing this with one hand here. You'll have to forgive me. Uh, copy setup.exe to the C drive. And it's reading. I'm probably gonna get that same yeah, sector not found reading drive A, so we'll uh, fail and zero files copied. All right, so moving on. Oh, another one here, although this one is making a, you can probably hear that sound there it's making, which is not a good sign, um, but it is able to read off of it. This is drive copy. Yeah, drive copy by PowderQuest Corporation. So this one again, we can see the files on it. Can we actually copy anything off of it though? We'll do the readme.txt to the C drive. It's probably going to fail once again. Yep, sector not found, reading drive A. Oh, we got another one here that we were able to get it to read. Can we do a directory listing? Yes, we can. Good PE tilde one dot RTF. So let's see, what is this labeled? Good people RTF file. All right, well, let's see what good people, let's see what this file is. So let's, well, let's see if we can copy it. And the answer is no. Oh, and we got another one back to back here. Uh, this one, oh, never mind. Data error reading drive A. Um, well, we were able to do a directory listing, but then it immediately gave us a data error. Will it do that again? Uh, yes, it will. So this one, uh, oh, this is magic scan. Oh, check that out. All right, 55 files, turns us to the A prompt. This one is called Windows 3.1, disk number four. All right, well, we got a Windows installation here. Uh, so let's do a wide directory listing and let us copy, hmm, what do we want to copy? msd.exe, copy msd.exe to the C drive. Nope, that ain't gonna work. And we got another one here, another two back to back. Uh, this might actually be another Windows 3.1 setup disk app. Let's see, let us see. This one's called Lynx One. All right, so put that one back in here. Let's try to copy lynx.cfg. One file copied. Oh, it looks like we have, is this Microsoft Golf? Golf.exe? Golf.exe to the C drive. So it was able to copy links.cfg because that's at the very beginning of the disk. You try to go in a ways to golf.exe, it fails on that data error reading drive A. So we were able to copy golf or this links.cfg file though, but we're gonna add it to the same pile of uh, disks that I have down here and we'll move on. Okay, this one is working as well. LBA.003, it's probably like a part of a setup uh, diskette package or something. Uh, relentless, that's what this is called, relentless. So let's, let's see just how relentless it is. We'll copy LBA.003. We could have just done star dot star as well since it's the only file on here. Will this copy? Nope, it will not. Okay, another one here works. This one is labeled Immortal. Gosh, what are these disk names? Immortal? Um, Harpoon.exe, all right, copy. Oh, yeah, Harpoon.exe, data error reading drive A. All right, that's unfortunate. Another one here, man, we've got a couple of these that are that are working. What is this one called? 
Uh, oh, this had someone's name on it that I crossed out. Um, so we've got PK, pkunzip.exe. All right, we'll try that. Data error reading drive aim. Okay, this is one of those Canon diskettes. You may be able to see it right there. Uh, so let's try to copy lpt.vxd uh, to the C drive. My guess is this ain't gonna work. Nope, it's not going to. All right. Let's try our other Canon printer drive here. This is the exact, literally the exact same disc. These are the ones that are, they're both two of two. So we'll try this one and uh, see if this one works. <laughs> and that one doesn't even work at all. Oh, all right. This is one of the Norton diskettes. We'll see if it returns us to the A prompt. Um, yes, it will. Okay, let me show you. This is uh, Norton Utilities for Windows 95 Emergency Disk 1. So we've got startup.exe, we have config.sys. Let's try to copy startup.exe and we'll see if this copies. General failure reading drive A, not gonna work. All right. Well, good news, we've got another one. This. Uh, the drive label is install. Uh, this is plug and play configuration manager for MS-DOS and Windows 3.1. Uh, there's no company name or anything like that. So this was this probably could have been bundled with a piece of hardware or something. Uh, we will copy, let's say readme.com into the C drive. Sector not found, all right. And this is that Chuck E. Cheese disc that uh, I found very interesting. Um, yeah, this is the Pizza Time Theater. I, I think this is like a, I mean, it says show three 2017, um, probably for like a show computer, as it says right here, enter disc into the disc drive and reboot the show computer. So this was probably used on a computer for something at Chuck E. Cheese. I don't know, well, let's see if this one works. I was really interested in, oh my gosh, it actually works. Okay, well, it doesn't necessarily mean it works. Can we copy? Well, let's see if we can we edit autoexec.bat. Actually, I don't think MS-DOS edit is going to think it. Yeah, bad commander file name. Okay, can we copy it? Uh, no, I don't want to overwrite the existing one. Um, how about, okay, let's try apr17.ezexe. Okay, one file copied, huh? So this one, my guess is this disk is bootable because there's an autoexec.bat, a command.com, there's one exe file. We're gonna try at the end of this video to boot off of this because we're able to copy that one file. So this one may work. It might not, but it might. And so we're gonna try this one at the very end of the video. But for now, we've got uh, a little bit of yeah, we've got like probably 10, 15 diskettes here to go through. So we're going to go through those. Okay, we've got two back to back here. This one is, this was a Microsoft diskette actually. Yeah, C6 run lib, as you can see. It will turns us to the A prompt. This is Microsoft Windows Software Development Kit C6.0 runtime library. So let us try to copy... Um, Install that bat. One file copied. Okay. Um, let's try to copy the lib folder to let's try to copy this entire folder. And no, that ain't gonna work. So this one again, install that bat is at the very beginning of the diskette. The lib is not, so only part of like the the entire. I mean, it's still able to read this. It's still able to copy that. Although, will it be intact? Uh, I don't know, but. Uh, trying to copy this lib folder does not work.
Well, that's all of them, everybody. So what we're going to do now is, well, first of all, let me just show you how many diskettes out of those we were able to. So again, we started with 100. We had 100 diskettes. We had probably about, I think, 15 that were physically damaged. And out of all of those, the ones that were not physically damaged, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 diskettes that we were able to uh, read files off of. We were able to see the contents of the disk, but we were not able to copy. Well, some of these, I think at least two or three of these, we were able to copy files off of one part of the disk, but not the other because the, the entire disk was not fully intact. But I'm interested in this one right here. This is again that Chuck E. Cheese diskette. We're gonna try to pop it into the drive and we're gonna reboot and see if it's able to, to boot off of this because it appears that this is a bootable diskette. There's an autoexec.bat on there um, and a command.com. So we're gonna see uh, if we can boot off of this because this would be really interesting to see what this is. Cannot load DOS, press key to retry. Starting Caldera DR DOS. Oh my gosh, that's a name I've not heard in a while. Okay, we've got a self extract utility on here. Show three 2017 update finished. Uh, remove disk and reboot the computer. So we'll remove the disk and restart. I mean, this is just going to load us back into Windows 98, I would think. Maybe we'll have some like Chuck E. Cheese files on there now. So, okay. Out of those 100, one worked. So that's interesting. But you saw the first time we tried to boot off of this, it said that it couldn't find DOS. If the camera will focus here, it said it couldn't find DOS. We restarted, then it was able to boot up into, again, Caldera DR DOS. Yeah, so one out of 100, literally, one of these worked. So, all right, pretty awesome. Now we'll see what files it copied. I am really interested now in seeing what, what exactly this is. So let's go into my computer here. Here's Norton Antivirus gonna come up and complain about, your virus protection is 188 days old. You know, I think it's a little bit older than that. Just, just throwing that out there. So it copied stuff to the C drive, I assume. Yeah, here's that install.bat file that we copied from that other diskette, and this appears to be fully intact, so that's good. Oh, what is this? CYB, yeah, this was the this was the folder that it created. So what is this? Is there an executable in here? There's not. But these files, 12.2 kilobytes. CYB, I don't know what that stands for. Oh, CEC. Yeah, CEC is Chuck E. Cheese. So this is like a proprietary file format. But that is interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting that uh, that this diskette worked. I mean, we can try it. Let's, uh, let's pop it back in. The reason that I did all of this in MS-DOS mode is because Windows typically completely freezes up when there's a... Like, I, I had sorted this in Windows. And a few of those diskettes, I mean, well, I, I started to put them in and then it wouldn't do anything like Explorer would, would lock up literally. And you'd have to force eject the drive and then in some cases just reboot the entire computer because it would just freeze up Windows. But this is doing the same thing. So it's inflating these files here, yep, CYB, and there's all these CEC files. So it looks like it's first extracting them all to the A drive, that's exactly what it's doing. It's extracting them all to the A drive and then it's probably gonna copy them. Cyber, yeah, C-Y-B-S-T-A-R.C-F-G. So there's a couple of C-E-C, well, most of these are C-E-C files and then some of them are, yeah, S-C-H, which for some reason I wanna say screensaver, but that's S-C-R. Let me look up, I, I assume this is a proprietary file format. I'm gonna look up file info. That is not a file type according to file info either. So these are both proprietary file formats. So show three, 2017, Update finish. I mean, this is certainly not from the year 2017. Although maybe it is. Do you think Chuck E. Cheese would have used floppy diskettes up until 2017? That is an interesting question. If anyone out there, and I, I know I said this in the last video, but if any of you guys work at Chuck E. Cheese, uh, you would know this firsthand. I mean, I didn't really think before when I saw this, I was like, oh, 2017, that's probably just like some version number or something. Maybe, maybe it's the year. Maybe floppy disks are still used at Chuck E. Cheese for whatever these shows are. Well, it's obviously something with a computer. I don't think it would be with the animatronic. Maybe this is with the animatronics. Maybe this is the program that controls the animatronics. I don't know. Man, I'm gonna have to do like a whole video on this now. Oh my gosh, I was right. This was modified. This was modified in 2016. 
Look at that. Modified 2013, 2016, and this is not the date of the system. The system date is set to 2000, August of 2000. This is, like, from a few years ago. That's crazy. So Chuck E. Cheese, I just dropped it here. So Chuck E. Cheese is still using... <laughs> Floppy diskettes, for whatever this is, in 2017, and may still be today. It was obviously not manufactured in 2017, but it was used, maybe it was purchased from floppydisk.com by Chuck E. Cheese to like store this, I don't know. But that's very interesting. That's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was a really interesting one for me to make, and I'm really excited that one of these worked, and it was the disc I was most curious about in that last video. But if you guys enjoyed this one, if you want to see videos uh, like this in the future, be sure to give this one a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below. Turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this video which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.